this? Yeah, okay, all right. Um, so anyway, so I'll be talking about Apollo today. So in general, here's a uh, typical genome analysis workflow. Uh, you have sequencing, you create assembly from the sequences, you run it through a pipeline, do produce a curated gene set um, and produce some type of curated uh, analysis, send it out, and hopefully you have funding to do this all again. Um, doing that analysis and dissemination requires high quality data. The one thing you don't want to be end up doing is sharing this error that you get from your annotation, which goes out and people are analyzing data with error in it and doing synthesizing and um, whatnot. And so the point of, of using Apollo, when we're talking about it a little bit today, is not only being able to understand and view the error, but then reduce it. Um, before it actually gets out the door. And the idea with this is that that manual annotation step is that it should be a final step before that happens. And with an explosion of yet more sequencing data every year, uh, this problem is going to get worse. So with that increase of annotation data, uh, there's new requirements required for these tools. Um, the most important is just being able to assist when assemblies are poor. Um, and so the two of the main problems are when you, you create these, uh, sometimes assemblies can have uh, cause fragmented annotations if your assemblies are poor, uh, as well as if you have limited coverage, it makes it difficult for tools to precisely identify uh, annotations. So with that, being able to do manual annotations allows a uh, biologists to come in, do analysis on demand, uh, make use of different researchers' expertise, and integrate all underlying evidence to most correctly and accurately uh, represent the underlying biological data. So uh, the second important piece of this is the ability to support collaborators who are geographically dispersed. Um, biology, more and more, um, as shown with the Galaxy and other tools, is it's a team sport. It's very rarely a single individual doing a single set of annotations. The manual annotation, of course, is a, um, uh, it's an intensive task because it's a manual task. And so being able to integrate many users geographically is an important uh, piece of that puzzle. And to that end, because it's a manual process, requiring a intuitive or providing an intuitive interface is also important. So uh, Apollo is split up into three sections: um, a, a genome an or a, an evidence viewer, which is driven by JBrowse, a genome annotation editor, and an annotator panel. And the evidence viewer is essentially JBrowse, um, and this allows uh, users to uh, read. Uh, Vari uh, various types of files, BAMs, GFF3, GemBank, uh, VCF, BigWigs, and probably a couple others I haven't mentioned. Um, we can, through Apollo, we can theme it multiple ways, and I believe there are multi mo even more JBrowse themes. Um, here we also are allow, uh, allow coloring of the CDS frames as well. And these typically come off of the automated annotation tracks that you're doing up upstream with uh, tools such as Galaxy uh, and, and others. Um, and because it's JBrowse uh, and we're leveraging JBrowse, there's many things you can do. We can load tracks locally, remotely, can statically configure them. And there's this very large um, uh, uh, set of registries. I'm showing uh, four of these, or three of these from uh, Colin Deesh, who recently rejoined the Apollo, or the JBrowse project. Um, there are a total of 44 registered plugins that you can visually add in at any time. Um, and I'll also note that there's a hackathon Friday, or during the hackathon Friday and Saturday, and maybe Sunday, Monday, um, two of the three uh, JBrowse developers will be there as well as myself. Um, but there's a registry that you can go through and, and see if there's things that would be apropos to what you're trying to solve. Another tool I just want to mention with JBrowse is this JB Connect piece. I, I misspelled uh, Eric Yao's name, but this is a JBrowse server that you can do uh, analysis that integrates with things like uh, Galaxy and other stuff. So just a couple things that are occurring through that as well. It also has a very nice uh, blast interface. You can do filtering of hits and whatnot as well, which in theory should be uh, integratable with, uh, with Apollo. Um, so the second piece is the annotation editor. It allows you to take that evidence, um, put it into a editable uh, workspace, and then make changes. Um, so it's 
pretty straightforward. Again, graphically intuitive interface. You can um, just drag these annotations from the editing area up, um, or you can create a variety of different annotations, genes, pseudogenes, uh, a variety of non-coding uh, RNA. Um, additionally, we just recently had the ability to annotate variants as well uh, in a very similar manner, as well as you can provide a, a variety of variant info as well um, and get export these as VCFs. Um, so once you've uh, created an annotation, just simply drag, uh, drag it around to edit the structure. Um, there's a variety of different ways you can change the annotation types. You can set a variety of different uh, biological uh, properties on this. And when you make these changes, you can also go back and view the history graphically um, and revert to whatever position you want to. Additionally, if you do sense or find errors within the, within the sequence, you can make changes, alterations to the sequence, um, and those will be reflected in the annotations that you've made, so you don't have to go back and uh, fix your sequence and keep going. You just make the, the annotate, or make, indicate the change to your sequence, and all future annotations will automatically pick that up. So the third piece of the, of the Apollo interface is this annotator panel. Um, and it works just like a regular application panel. The very, you could share locations with other researchers that you're working with easily. Um, it's collapsible, so you don't have to look at the whole time if you don't need to. Um, it lit, so the first tab just allows you to list things vertically so you can navigate independently of where you happen to be uh, uh, on the screen. Um, you can, ex you can uh, search in a sim way that's similar to JBrowse, um, different reference sequences as well as export stuff as G, uh, GFF3, FASTA, directly to Chato if you have it configured, um, and variants, which I don't have listed here. Um, configuration is pretty easy. You can just take any regular biological data file, uh, process it in JBrowse land, um, and just mount the directory and away you go. Um, and another piece that we've added and continues to add probably faster than other things is just this user permissions uh, aspects. Because it works with such large groups, um, we allow a Unixy-like user group permission thing so we, so we can have groups of users able to edit some uh, organisms and not others. Um, and then most recently, uh, one of the on-ramp developers um, they give, it gave some talks in, in Galaxy, have a workflow system, and so they added this instructor rule, because this is also a tool that gets used for doing instruction quite often as well. Um, and so we, there's also uh, web services and whatnot allowing people to integrate it with other systems so they can manage these user groups and permissions, fairly straightforward. And of course we have a, an administration screen as well, which allows reports, uh, types of reports you would think, as well as this predefined curation term uh, uh, section. And this is important because if you have lots of curators curating lots of things, they'll come up with different ways of saying the same things. And having this cura set of curation uh, canned or um, predefined comments or keys is important uh, just to, to kind of fi fix what, how uh, curator or researchers are describing these uh, annotations. So the, this is a summary of features. We have an evidence viewer, a genome annotation editor, and an annotator panel, uh, which allows users to uh, review and correct feature sets. Um, as listed here, the exons, introns, UTRs, so on and so forth, um, different uh, coding and non-coding RNAs, um, as well as VCFs, which I don't have uh, listed here. And so just want to talk very briefly about the architecture. It's a simple client-server uh, like anything else. JBrowse sits on the file system. The server is a JVM-style server. Um, <coughs> and then we have all of the, a or most of the API that we use to drive the servers are also available via the web service, or via web services as well. Um, and this is important uh, just because it makes it easy to pop Apollo into a web server, uh, web, uh, sorry, a workflow uh, of any type, such as Galaxy or a variety of other methods. And so this is all driven off of the web services we provide, um, which uh, continue to expand um, largely due to the people who've been integrating it and asking us to either add stuff or fixing stuff or adding it themselves, which has been great. Um, some of the stuff that I, I had done recently um, were adding, as well as uh, Deepak Uni, who used to work on this as well, 
um, was just adding track services so you can grab individual uh, portions outside of the um, evidence within JBrowse and just decompose it into a simple JSON. We've done the same thing with uh, variants. And with that, we've also added a little widgety tool that, that reads off this. And it's, uh, you can see we've, we've running this using the Alliance, uh, the, basically a mod consortium. I don't know if that's the right word for it. Uses this as well as the Monarch Initiative. Um, and it should be available uh, for other folks to use as well. Um, also driven off of the web services is this Python, uh, is a Python API developed by the folks at um, the Galaxy Genome, um, GGA, Galaxy Genome Annotation Project, um, which is also, I think Bjorn should also be on there as well. And the folks at uh, OnRamp that do s somewhat related stuff, and there's a lot of overlap, that's Luke Sargent and uh, yeah, Ting Li. Um, and, as a result of this, we've had many organizations and, and labs produce this data, or produce data using, or refine data using Apollo and, and uh, produce it or publish it on uh, other platforms. So um, in summary, uh, researchers are able to refine genome annotations we've, um, and do this in real time. Uh, we've tried to make it intuitive. It'll be a constant struggle to maintain that, but um, and it integrates with workflow, existing workflows and new workflows as they've come about. So I just want to thank um, Deepak Uni, who I guess is recently not on the Apollo, but also with the Bebop group, uh, the JBrowse developer, Eric Yao, Robert Buells, and now, as of yesterday, uh, Colin Deesh is now working with JBrowse, so he should probably be on the credit slide instead of a thank you slide. Um, Monica Munoz Torres, who used to work on this, and I think was a, a or part of uh, Bosque as well, um, and the Galaxy team uh, as well, and uh, is it the Go team as well, Chris Mungle and Seth Carvin. Um, so just real quickly, getting Apollo um, the directions there. Uh, if you need to contact us, I'll be at the poster downstairs today, not tomorrow. Uh, B28, and there was a Birds of a Feather yesterday, but there'll be a hackathon tomorrow and Saturday, uh, and get her pokes. And, and we are looking for uh, collaborators as well for either doing further integrations. Uh, we have some other project ideas, so please talk to me uh, after this to figure some of this out. All right, uh, questions? Yeah? Thank mm -hmm. you.